Welcome back to Indie E3. And uh, what do we got? Oh, um, sorry. So uh, we have a panel today that I'm very, very excited to bring you guys because I think it's very important to uh, the ecosystem of contemporary gaming, ecosystem of at least 2014, um, if not the extended future. But we have, um, I, I have a professional streamer, and I have a professional game developer, and they're going to talk about the uh, relationship between the two and how those reflect off of each other. And I will be here to help moderate it. Um, but we have HJ Tenchi, who you can find at twitch.tv backslash HJ Tenchi, is a very good friend of mine and one of the best streamers in the world. Uh, just a very entertaining and lovable person. And then we have uh, Laith, who is a amazing game developer who's working on so many different projects. And we're going to show some of them here today, uh, some of those trailers, because they're very, very cool. And it's going to be an amazing conversation. So let's bring them in. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, Tenchi. Hello, Leth. Hi, how are you? Doing Hello. I just introduced you guys. I'm very happy to uh, be able to host you guys in a conversation Thanks. about streaming and about game development and how those work together. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, to start things off, I wanted to show off your work, Leith. I, I want to Thanks. show off you uh, sent us links to Wanderlust Adventure, and this mm -hmm. is the debut trailer. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about it before we go into it? Yeah, Wanderlust Adventures is the follow-up to Wanderlust Rebirth, released in 2012. It's uh, it's not necessarily a sequel. It's it's um it's more like a successor. It's an open world four player co-op action adventure game with RPG elements uh, being published by Chucklefish. And we're hoping to uh, have it ready in beta at PAX Prime this year. We're gonna be there. Oh, and wow. um, and then hopefully launch shortly after after PAX is, is done. And um, yeah, we're, we're super excited. We worked on this trailer for about a week. Uh, in preparation for this, in preparation for your event, we heard about the event happening, and oh, well, let's we were see. like, "Okay, we gotta have a trailer ready." The Indie Three debut trailer, then uh, a week in progress. I cannot wait to see. Let's hit it up. There's the sound. Wanderlust Adventures. <laughs> wow, it's gonna be so good. Uh, so that is that is just one project as well. That's my yeah. That's my that's one of my current projects. Yeah, and the other one is called Witch Marsh, and it's in the last twenty four hours of its Kickstarter right now. It's already been funded successfully, but that's right. That's right. We're we pushing for some stretch goals. And uh, in the week when it just when it had a couple days. <laughs> Now it only has 21 hours left, so I'm really 21 hours left, yeah. We can get back to it. If you guys haven't seen this yet, you're in for a treat. So let me present Witch Marsh by Inglenook.
and that is Witch Marsh by Ingle Nook, also worked on by Leth. Yep. So cool. They're both Chucklefish games too. Chucklefish has um, been really great in finding um, indie studios who need a little extra boost and uh, you know marketing acumen added to their projects and and uh, I was able to help facilitate a meeting between the two and the rest is history. Wow. Mm. Uh, so I think these are actually really both these and uh, Risk of Rain, which I, I can put up uh, some video of uh, while we are in discussion. Great, thanks. Um, we can talk about what's going on there. I'll even I'll bring up Tenchi's videos of it too, because you've got some good vods of it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, well, it's it's important. It's indicative of what we're what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of these games are multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. And you're bringing people together in a same space um, and playing games together. And now that we are in a, a time where we have access to platforms like Twitch and platforms like Hitbox, live streaming software where we can play games online publicly and perform these games for people and perform them together in collaboration with other groups, uh, these things seem to have a fantastic way of uh, manifesting themselves into even more larger collaborative efforts. And oh, so yeah. I want to, I want to ask, I want to kind of start the conversation talking to you guys about um, what it's like working within uh, for on either of your guys' sides as a streamer and as a developer uh, working in the current ecosystem of, uh, performative gaming. I'd say easily uh, right off the bat, this is by far one of the best times to be a gamer. Uh, being able to meet so many people so easily, meeting uh, not only just other people that play the video games on the same consoles or the same uh, platforms, etc., but also being able to meet the actual devs, the person that you have always looked up to or the person's uh, game that you're playing all the time. You get to go up and say, hey, you know, I love your game. Let's do something. And not everybody's always as receptive as others, but, like, you know, I talked to Leth, and Leth's like, hey, man, let's go play some video games. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a great friendship ever since. We we play a lot of games together, and I usually try and keep them up as late as possible, so it's good times. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do a good job of that myself, though. <laughs> Just lines up perfectly being in the Pacific time zone. And then what about from, from your end as a... Uh... Uh, the developer within this relationship, how does that work together with uh, building out a game that's in development as it's being played? Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitch has... Basically, uh, while I was working on Risk of Rain, I noticed that um, it was getting some attention on Twitch TV. And this was before Hitbox kind of came around. Um, well, there's and live I, streaming I just, platforms. Yeah, yeah. On, on live streaming platforms, and I, I realized the potential for, for that to be something that I, um, that I could um, take part in and utilize as means to promote the products that I'm working on. And uh, so I started streaming on my own and fortunately got the opportunity to play Starbound on my stream before anybody else could play the game and immediately got a huge following. Um, so after, after that, um, I took... Uh, some inspiration from Vlambeer and uh, Bartwee, who is the was the coder on Starbound. They both stream as they work on their projects. So now that's what I do as well. I have my own channel and stream while I code and test and develop the game uh, alongside the other people working on the project. So we do live development, interact with viewers, and then because we've become so um, encompassed by the, the uh, streaming community, We've built these great relationships with streamers that will presumably be interested in playing the game when it's done and, and help us out with our you know our marketing. Does that affect development at all? It it does. Um, we get instant feedback, which is which is nice. Um, uh, basically, uh, people watching the stream can kind of just you know oh could you do it this way or this way? I didn't you know I had trouble trouble with this. What did you do to change it? And we get to you know, address concerns right then and there, and and it's a more organic process rather than one that's kind of digital, uh, where it's like here's a product, and then we get the feedback, and then we respond to that. It's just uh, 
more collaborative. And to be frank, it helps me stay on task. Um, when you're, when you start working at home and you know, you're your own boss, it sometimes can be tough to stay motivated to work, you know, five to eight hours a day or whatever you need to do to get things done. And now I'm just addicted to the streaming community <laughs> where I want to turn my stream on and start working and, and have that interaction. So um, although I can get sidetracked by some philosophical conversations at times, uh, some game development discussions, it does still um, help promote the game and our work at the same time. I, I still think it's helping the game, even if I'm not coding at that particular instance. So you're making this brilliant adaptation of uh, uh, the Twitch platform and the Hitbox platform, live streaming as a system uh, to help you actually continue your work uh, and just mm -hmm. keep you on track. Yeah. That's that's amazing. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, likewise, I know, Tenchi, you, you have very similar stories, even though you come from the, the live streamer side of things as the player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's nice. Uh, like I was joking, and I always joke about it. it's like it's I get the easy part. I get to turn on, I press a button, and I ramble and play video games, and it's great. And then so when less done making stuff, I get to play his games. And then um, I think what you're going to talk about a little bit later maybe is uh, the fact that I can then promote both myself and the game and left all at the same time. There's no, uh, when you play a game as a live streamer or YouTuber for that matter, or any, any type of content creation based off of somebody else's content, you're not just promoting yourself, but you're also promoting, uh, the content creator, the original mm -hmm. developer. And I think it's just a great symbiotic, uh, relationship. And most companies, whether they are big companies or small companies, uh, I think are finally figuring this out. It's, there's really, even if it's bad press, uh, which we've seen a lot of uh, through like E3 with some of the bigger companies, um, you're still getting press. I would not normally pay attention to certain things. And if a, you know, a streamer comes online and says, you know, hey, this game sucks, you know, and makes a big stink of it, you know, somebody's going to tune in and take a look at it too. Now, hopefully it's mostly positive, but you know, stuff happens. Not everybody's going to like your product. So. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's really cool. It's it's fun to be able to do this. I love it. It's not easy. Uh, nothing nothing in life's really ever easy, except ice cream. Ice cream's amazing. But besides that, um, it's just good stuff. I'm really really happy with it, and I, I'm glad to be a part of this community. So uh, interesting uh, to kind of flip it around in a way. You're talking about the symbiotic relationship, the this kind of like give and take. And you're saying that as a streamer, you are you are giving a lot, and I'm kind of wondering, uh, Tenchi, uh, what how does how do things change as you find new games that you're really interested in? Um, well, how does that affect uh, you as a streamer if like you are playing Risk of Rain with friends and uh, helping as as the as Risk of Rain itself grows as a game? Um, well, it's it's really cool to be able to, uh, once again, as a streamer, uh, my responsibilities are minimal. I, I go online and I, as, as Les said, uh, being full time on this, I get to do kind of whatever I want. Um, now, the, the negative to that is it's hard to keep motivated sometimes and to turn this into a business and not just, you know, mess around all day. Um, but I think because this is something I want to do and push for as a professional job right now, um, that I get to meet a lot of people and I get to play those games with them. As games change, I can move to any game I want. Uh, I, I have no real responsibilities with any company to uh, really promote this. I can, you know, I can keep my integrity intact by playing the game what I, how I want and when I want it and say what I want about it for the most part. And, uh, you know, like, let's say Left is like, hey, I have, I have some downtime. Let's let's play a game. And usually I always say, let's play Risk of Rain or let's play Wanderlust. You know, some of his games because <laughs> I like them. And um, it, and we can just jump right into that. And I, I'm not sure I quite hit your question properly, but um, it's it's great. Sure, <laughs> it's just, sure. It's I all can, great. I can even expand on it. Um, so Risk of Rain just came out with another patch. Yeah. About a month ago. And so this was a game that you streamed a lot before you, uh, before you were partnered with Twitch and had a uh, did this as a full time gig. Mm -hmm. um, so now that it has a patch, uh, do you come back to it and, and play it as much as you did before, or less, or how does that oh. affect things now within the your your realm, your world? 
Um, well, uh, because it was actually a pretty big patch, I have been playing it uh, quite a bit. Less on my stream, um, but mostly just because I've been doing some other stuff. And I I try and jump in with uh, one of my buddies, Edward Vapid, who streams when he plays it, or Leth himself when he's streaming. Um, but uh, with a big content patch like that, once again, I'm not tied to going back to it if I don't want to, just because that's how I run my stream. But um, I find that it's something that I do want to go back to. I've been having a blast with it. I was I was actually in a podcast the other day, and uh, because I didn't really have to pay too much attention, I was playing Risk of Rain in the background because all the new uh, the new patch adds a bunch of artifacts and stuff that you can heavily modify the game. Uh, one of the artifacts alone, uh, I think, completely changes the game so amazingly that it's you have to go back and play this. Um, but I don't have to do anything, but I'm going to. I definitely have come back and played a lot of it because I just, I really like the game. I support it. And how does, uh, how does that affect you on your side, Leith? What are you thinking about? Uh, it's, he distracts me from my work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much all, I, I, I really enjoy, uh, getting to work around um, like 5 p.m. and then working until like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so Tenchi wraps his stream up, I think, at 9 p.m. Eastern and then starts spamming me and wanting to play games. Yep. And I'm over here like, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I'm trying to finish this thing. You know, all right, whatever, let's just play, you know. <laughs> and then I'll just jump on and, and play games about three or four hours. Because I, I, I say he keeps me from working, but... I honestly feel, and I, I came into the Twitch thing thinking, oh, this is going to help me sell more games, right? Like, totally selfish motivation. And, um, uh, well, I mean, you have to be selfish to a degree or self-centered with, with your, your marketing practices because um, who else is going to tell people about your games if you haven't told anyone, right? Like, you, <laughs> you have to be the first way. person to tell anybody. Yeah, but um, uh, basically, I, I started off thinking, you know, I'll... I'll you know, become chill with these guys and then maybe they'll play my games later. But now um, I've created new friendships. Um, I'm supporting the streamer. I, I'm, uh, what do you call it? Subscribed to like 12 streams now. <laughs> and uh, I got Twitch Turbo a few days ago and I'm just, I'm hooked. Um, so when someone invites me to play one of my games or any game really that my computer can run, um, I am all on board. I love co-op gaming. And I love it when someone takes interest in, in what I do. Of course, I'm going to play and take time for them if they're doing the same for me. I really like that that way that... Um, oh, I had a train of thought and I just totally lost it. <laughs> I'm, I'm captivated. I was watching... Uh, we had uh, on the stream you, Tenchi's playthrough of Risk of Rain uh, featuring Edward Vapid that you repped earlier and also featuring uh, Sarah Sharpie. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so that's a thing where all three of you guys are streaming it at the same time yep. and currently. And so mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of like this uh, very mutual relationship. Um, and I'm trying to remember, I think my question was um, to Leth. It was Leth if... Uh... Oh, I remember. So... Uh, <laughs> We've been talking about this idea of performative play, right? Uh, where you are performing the play and you're performing game development in front of an audience of people. Um, and you guys are doing this full time. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, pressure and there's a lot of uh, people involved that are watching this. Um, and so it's very interesting to me that afterwards, you guys are coming together uh, on your off time to play games but not in a performative space. Right. Uh, well, yeah, we're, all, we're we're gamers, mm -hmm. you know. That's why we're doing what we you know what we do is is a different aspect of gaming, and it's a great new way to experience games. But uh, we wouldn't be here if we didn't love playing games in the first place, you know. Oh heck yeah, man! There's there's uh, there's no <laughs> eight hours a day of me playing video games. Uh, it it, it maybe. <laughs> It maybe would lessen the desire a little bit, but when you have good people in the community, I mean, this community is amazing. Whether it, it, online platform streaming or um, Steam and all that stuff too, just regular gaming offside of the performative side, as you're saying, um, it's it's still just damn fun. It's it's so good to meet so many amazing people. 
Uh, it's it's really been uh, a positive thing, I think, for gaming. Yeah, I actually kind of want to hear more of your thoughts, Tenchi, on uh, how this whole gaming scene, as it is contemporary, works from your side as a professional streamer and how you're kind of seeing it all work out with indie gaming. You said that it's the, the best time to be a gamer or someone who plays games. And uh, yeah, I want to I want to hear your thoughts on that since there's so many people now coming into this ecosystem in mm-hmm. from so many different pr- directions. I, I, I like I said, I think it's great. Um, there's really just better and better things coming along. Um, the some people fear the oversaturation kind of i guess or the the large influx of people coming in that have not played video games before or that maybe are i, I hate the word but casual um i don't think there's an issue i think there's what that, plenty what would of that room. even mean well casual back in the day was a little bit more of like people that played like facebook games or some people felt people that played uh maybe mobile games which is actually a really big scene right now for a lot of indie developers uh from what i know of um, but I, I think people are starting to shed some of the negativity of that. I remember it seemed like more a few years ago, maybe it was just when I was getting into the industry, there was more of that. Um, I feel the people that are in the industry, they're, they're neck deep in it. They're, they're making games, they're streaming games. They're, you know, part of YouTube or just promoting sites. You don't ever have to be the actual, uh, quote unquote personality right in front of the camera. But, um, I think a lot of the negativity is leaving and it's just a good time to be in the industry. Um, there's more and more awesomeness coming out every time. I mean, I get to play really cool games that you know might not even be out for a whole nother year. Um, I got put into a couple games just by knowing the people, and I never would have thought that would have happened. You know, I wouldn't have done anything like that if I hadn't been in the industry. And um, I get to turn something that is a hobby and a lifelong enjoyment into something that I might be able to make a living off of one day. So I, I really think there's there's always going to be negatives on every aspect of life, sure. But I think the the positive aspects of what's going on right now in the gaming industry is far going to outstrip anything bad. Um, this E3 alone, from what little I've gleamed of it, seems to be going in the right direction too. More about, hey guys, let's play video games. And I like that because usually E3 wasn't about that, it seemed like, from what little I know. I think that you said some stuff in there that was actually uh, really amazing, tying together an idea of being a gamer and being in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's kind of amazing that's never been heard of before. Usually when you think of like, how does a, how does someone who plays video games get into the industry? Uh, The avenues of the past were uh, kind of tangential or esoteric, uh, usually through like game testing, uh, QA, uh, that those were the ways that the ways that you played could express themselves by by being the person who fixes bugs, um, and you're you're talking about now it's about playing publicly and playing games publicly, and now you're in a point where you're getting uh, access to games and game developers in very private ways. Uh, you get to like that that idea of being in the industry is just kind of being behind the curtain. Oh yeah. Um- like you said uh, just a second ago, back in the day, you used to, if you wanted to be a part of the industry, you were that uh, not even a pay, unpaid intern. You were the guy that did, or gal for that matter, uh, that did all that nonsense the developers didn't want to do. You were the person that did the the stress testing and the stuff like that. It's like, hey, attaboy, thank you very much. We're going to send you a copy of uh, a, a pet cosmetic hat and uh, good job. And if that, and nowadays I get to be a part of things. You know, if you're on Twitter, especially for a lot of development, uh, maybe Let's going to be like, hey, guys, uh, I don't know what I want to do with this final boss. What do you think? This or this? And, you know, I don't know if he would actually do that, but um, I'm going to force my opinions on his game no matter what. So, <laughs> Tenshi, I, you want to be my intern? Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> I need an intern. I want paid in gummy bears, but just the green ones, darn it. So yeah, it just uh, it's it's great because I, I will in no way say I am a game developer. I'm not a producer. I'm not a tester. I'm not. I'm not part of any company. Uh, I'm just some idiot that plays video games. But um, it's easier to be a part of 
the industry. It's easier to feel a part. I can go to a convention and some people notice me, and there are people like, "Hey, man, how you doing? Thanks for playing my game," uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's awesome. That wouldn't have happened five, ten years ago. I don't know if you have any uh, thoughts on that as well, Len. Uh, well, Twitch is fairly new to me, and and I was fortunate enough to kind of um, break into the indie scene before it was seen as a necessity, but um, I completely empathize with that whole notion of, you know, having to start your way from the bottom, typically. Um, I'm 35 years old, so 10 years ago, um, I had dreams of getting into game development and, uh, you know, was was learning programming in college and was just completely ignored by virtually every email um, application that I sent out to any game developer at the time, you know, they they probably received hundreds. I can't blame them, but um, I thought it was just an impossibility. So I was just like, well, you know, what's this game maker thing? I'm just gonna try and make my own games, and <laughs> and I didn't plan on selling them. Uh, took so long to make them that by the time I was finished with Wonderless Rebirth, um, Terraria had just launched on Steam. And we were like, well, wait, if that game can make money, then let's just sell our game too and see what happens. And then a year after that, Chucklefish found us and helped us get on Steam and, and the rest is history. I mean, we had Chucklefish taking a taking a you know, kind of a gamble on us. They like they liked our game, so um it takes that's what it takes. You gotta make something good and then the opportunity will come. And I'm just I'm very fortunate, but uh this was not a possibility for me ten years ago, like like Tenchi said. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, now is actually probably a great time to uh, roll in the indie aspect of it, the, the indie ecosystem and how that comes into play with uh, live streaming and game development, uh, especially in that uh, currently we have a lot of games that are uh, constantly in development, whether they're in early alpha or whether they are in some form of public beta or they have been released and are getting patches. Uh, mm -hmm. So games are constantly, uh, single individual games are constantly evolving. And uh, so that's a, a tight, it takes a tight relationship between streamers and developers to uh, manage that. And so Tenchi was talking about how he was getting early builds. And I would assume, Leth, that you are giving out early builds <laughs> to, uh, to people what? and to individuals. And so... No. <laughs> it's part What's of the ecosystem, about? right? <laughs> uh, definitely, though. Yeah, um, the, not not necessarily in, in the in uh, every situation, but no. I know people that have uh, picked. You get like uh, the real big people will get review copies, so like a week or two before it's even st uh, street released. You know, someone will get a copy, and then they can uh, set up their video, like especially for YouTube. Um, you know, and get it all ready and edited, and then so when the street date goes live, they can release it. The embargo lifts. Because they prevent you from, you know, a lot of times releasing uh, gameplay and stuff before it's released. Certain certain games do. Um, but yeah, I, I've picked up, uh, when I used to do a lot of YouTube stuff and I really um, focused on indie stuff, I would constantly contact other indie devs and I'd be like, hey, you know, this is, this is what I do. I want to promote your game. Um, it, would it be okay to get a build of some sort or buy a build from you and, uh, and make a video on it? And uh, a lot of a lot of indie people, especially, are very receptive to that. Um, obviously, maybe if you're just starting out, maybe not everybody will be as receptive. But um, I'm going to have some content to play. Uh, I personally get to enjoy a brand new game, and the indie person gets some coverage. And I mean, if it's if it's not an atrocious game, uh, it's it's going to be hopefully positive coverage. Uh, particularly with indie games, I. As a as a develop on the development side of this, I greatly encourage streamers to reach out to developers, uh, indie developers, about playing their games. There's nothing we love more than free publicity that just walks to our like just shows yeah. up on our doorstep, and or at least for me personally, there he's right. There are some developers out there that are gonna say no, but that's the worst that can happen. I mean, yeah. someone saying no to you is not the end of the world. Um, and sometimes the developers are also busy, so they, they miss your email or they can't get to, to it or whatever. If they don't respond to the first email, send a second one. Uh, don't send three, four, five, six, seven <laughs> emails, but, but definitely um, follow up on something you reached out because you want to play their game. They'll see that you're passionate about it, and they'll, 
try to work something out. I, I encourage everyone to contact me, or not necessarily me, but uh, Yeti Trunk for one of those adventures and Ingle Nook for when their game is nearing beta. Um, if you want to to stream the game, and believe me, we're gonna do our best to to make it happen. It it helps us just as much as it helps you. I think that's uh, really, really cool. Um, and so there are also uh, other factors involved too, as well, uh, based on the platforms people are playing for. And so like we're watching a YouTube video right now uh, from the Twitch stream, and it is being streamed over Hitbox. So there's like a, a long list of, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, of platforms involved in bringing us all of this content. And each have their own uh, quirks and... Uh, ways of working and so uh, I'm kind of wondering how how that works uh, maneuvering all of these different platforms from each of your guys's uh, directions and how you guys work together to kind of bring everything together uh, well I know from my side from just the the pure streaming YouTubing stuff side it's easy as heck it this is especially once you've been doing it for a while once you get your rhythm uh it's super easy uh with uh streaming i click a button and i'm live uh, i i can do extra stuff if i feel like it but i mean i've been doing this long enough now that i literally press the button and i'm live uh youtube takes a little bit more effort but a lot of the streaming sites now um have easy access to youtube you can connect your youtube content you can even uh edit out parts of what you want on the streaming platforms and then just upload it straight to youtube uh, so, I mean, once uh, there, there's a barrier to entry for sure, whether it's uh, hardware, software, knowledge, uh, time commitment and stuff like that. Um, editing YouTube videos can be a real pain in the ass uh, and it can take a long time, especially if you're um, having to render everything, which you will have to unless you're using just terrible recording like quality software. Um, but it's easy. It's it's once you learn how to do stuff, it is easy. It's just going to be a time commitment and a desire. Um, now, making a game and doing all that stuff, obviously, I don't know much about Lethwood, but um, from the streaming and content creation side, it's easy. Uh, from from the development side, we generally, I mean, I'm, I've worked on a few games that are, have uh, been fortunate enough to gain a lot of popularity, and uh, but I still, I'm still a nobody. <laughs> it, it feels like it never, you're, it's, and that's, Everyone has that perception where the grass is always greener or your things mm -hmm. are always out of reach, but I'm snubbed on a daily basis by by <laughs> streamers and and uh, you know other people on Twitter or whatever. Or even when I go to GDC and I have Risk of Rain on my my badge, you know, or Chucklefish or whatever, um, yeah, you just you're constantly ignored, and you have to just kind of let that go you know put it aside and be like whatever they just they just don't know who i am it's nothing personal I, you know if they want to stream my game they'll stream my game but i have to at least make the effort to contact them and see if they're interested at all you know um you will be you, there's going to be a lot of emails that you send out that, that you don't get a response from <laughs> yeah that's just the way it is and and uh you know if you if you don't want, if you, the game probably should be different, let's say, game, I mean, game figuratively speaking about the industry and, and making your way in as an independent developer. And I wish it was different, but it is how it is. I hate that phrase, but uh, you have to learn to play it, to play the game by its rules and uh, start by finishing a game. Oh, I don't even want to get into early access. <laughs> um, finish a game and then, and then work to get people to see it. That's once you finish the game, your work has just begun in terms of promotion. There's a whole nother uh, a whole nother level of work and love you have to put into the game to get it out there afterwards. Yeah. By by no means is especially on the development side, from what I can tell, is it easy. And even streaming, I, I kind of take back saying easy. It's there's a lot of hard work and stuff put in. Uh, the getting uh, let's see. Um I'd say making a game is harder than streaming, of course. Um, getting all that done and out is hard. Um, but then almost, I would say, I, I don't know percentage-wise, but it's almost just as hard to get people to notice you. Like Les was saying, you know, he's. I'd like to believe Les successful. He's, he's maybe not going to be right next to Nintendo at the E3 stage. <laughs> but, you know, it, he's successful. Uh, but because of the barrier of the internet, I'm not 
right there in the same room with all of you shaking your hand and talking about this. Um, I might not know who Leth is when I go to PAX. You know, I don't, I don't recognize him. And I don't immediately think, oh, this is the guy that plays, or that plays with the game that I play, but made this wonderful game that I love. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of difficulty with that with our industry because it's not in person. But uh, I, I think as Leth continues to get bigger and bigger and then, you know, releases, uh, he gets, you know, rights for Mario 27 <laughs> and, 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 and implements it into Wanderlust, it's just going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to work. Uh, I, I got to get in touch with um, Paul Dr. and, and uh, Duncan from Risk of Rain, see if we can work, uh, you know, the accurate as a, as a boss or a playable companion or something <laughs> in, in Wanderlust. <laughs> The twenty times more expensive just for that license than yeah, the whole put game some, creation. Put some penguins in there and make a Starbound cameo. You know? <laughs> oh, I want to play it. Well, I I know that uh, Ty Yuri would be all up for that. He would he he has already given us the green light on anything we want to do Starbound related in Wanderlust. So oh, that's awesome. Hopefully, we'll have time to implement something something special. And that um, I always think that's really cool. Uh, I'm someone will probably touch on this a little bit. Um, the interconnectivity with indie developers. Uh, I'll play a game, um, uh, Barbarian is a game I played recently, and uh, some of the characters in it are Octodad and Meat Boy, and uh, those are big indie games right there, and then uh, the new 1001 Spikes that came out, there's like, I don't even know how many secret characters from other games are in that. <laughs> that game looks fun. And, oh yeah, it's 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 less trolly than Boshy and stuff, so I, I didn't mind it. But it's really cool, you know, you see like your character from another game that you're playing, and you're like, oh, I love that guy, and I, I think it's really cool. It's less, like, you'll never see, like, especially when I was young, let's say 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, you would not see Sonic and Mario in the same game. Now, not so much. Now you'll see them in the same game, maybe, but back then, no. Uh, I can also add, uh, just an hour ago, we showed a trailer for Indie Pogo, and uh, that had a, it was going to be a fighting game, an indie fighting game where you play as indie characters from other games. That's cool. And uh, I had a I had one of those moments because the trailer is formatted as like a Smash Brothers hype trailer. Mm -hmm. just, I watched that. Yeah. They're just like throwing characters at you left and right, <laughs> uh, and every like they'll cut to black for like a really emotional five seconds before the next game comes in. And then uh, there was a moment when it was uh oh what was their name I think it's uh the character's name is Heart or something, uh from uh, Robot Loves. Heart. Oh, I can't remember the the name of the character though. But I I always immediately recognize it. Um, and once I yeah. saw it, I got so excited. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's and then once again, that's why not have the why not have a character that everybody loves already? Throw Isaac or Meat Boy in your game, you know, from Ed, uh, Edmund, and people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's that's that game I love. I want to play this. <laughs> Yeah, like they probably just reached out and and asked and were said yes to, you know, they're um and and it's totally natural for people to be nervous about contacting other other people that you, you know, you idolize to some degree. Um but uh we should be careful not to put people on too high of pedestals, you know. It makes I mean that's something I said on my Twitter just a a day or two ago. And because the moment you do that, you'll you increase your chances greatly of being disappointed in them when they oh, reveal yeah. that they're just a human being to, you know, <laughs> later on. <laughs> so for the, the point I was trying to make though, was that um, they're just people too, and they don't know about you. And it's, and how, how should, how could they, if you've never said hello, you know, you got to just reach out and see what happens. And it uh, looks like Indie Pogo, um, you know, they're doing a fine job of of getting in touch with some other developers, indie developers, and you know they never contacted me, but it's okay. I'm not gonna take it personal, you know. I, <laughs> just, it's, it's cool, it's all I'm right? A, you know, I'm a professional streamer. I'll talk to them for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all. You know, you gotta you gotta take the onus on yourself and and put yourself out there. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Uh, I want to come back to an earlier point. I think there was like a, an interesting parallel uh, and an anecdote that I have that just happened on Thursday. Um, but Leth, you were saying that uh, you're saying you're talking about that nobody nobody knows your face, nobody recognizes you, uh, but they might recognize your game. Tenchi people might recognize your face, 
and not mm-hmm. necessarily recognize like you for any one specific thing other than than streaming and so there's like this kind of weird uh parallel there or some kind of some kind of mm-hmm. opposite force uh where you guys that's why this like works together so well is that mm, uh, yeah the the uh what do you call it not mutualism um right a, a symbiotic relationship of sort thank you thank you a sort of yin to the yang kind of yeah. thing i the, had a um... moment i had a moment like that <laughs> uh thursday when i went to the university of washington to give my talk that uh we still have and we're going to try to fit it into this stuff somewhere um but we need to get that footage we were going to stream it didn't work out anyway um the the main point was that the developer for um for tiny barbarian was there and oh, that game was sweet. And they came up to me and they were like, uh, hey, I'm the guy that does Tiny Barbarian. I'm like, Tiny Barbarian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Barbarian? And they're like, Solon. <laughs> awesome. And I was just like, this is this is that kind of moment where it's like, these are the ways that developers and streamers just work and gel together so well. Uh, just cookies and cream. Well, and- that's just that's just life. And we just yeah. forget that. Um, I've, I've, I used to work in education, and um, some students would come up to me and, and they would, they would find out that I work on games on the side, or I, you know, I was volunteering in an after-school program for a time, uh, and uh, I was like, they're like, wow, you're so smart, or you're so talented, or something like that, and I would just respond and say, look, um, that's only because you value what I yeah. do. And it you have you do things that I have no concept of how to do as well. Like you speak two or three languages because you're in high school, you know, German, Spanish, and and English, and I can't do that at all. And so we all have our strengths, and we just need to learn to value one another's strengths, and we'll just realize, you know, we're all just people. Um, so Tenchi has a great strength in how he streams and caters to his community and provides entertaining content for the people who watch him. And I have talents in music and game development and, uh, you know, marketing to a degree. Uh, but that's, but how we value it is kind of what puts the, the success idea into it. And if we just learn to value what people, ha- what the strengths are that people have in general, we'll all just, you know, it'll kind of flatten itself out and you realize it's just we're just people that do different things. It'd be nice if we did that more often, but, mm-hmm. you know. Well, that's what you're doing with your games too, right? I'm trying. Yeah. That's what Wander Lust <laughs> is about, isn't it? Uh, you mean different bringing in people with different skills and yeah. and and uh, yeah, the power that's, of friends. That's true to a sense. Yeah, you have to play cooperatively, and <laughs> each character class has a role to play. Yeah, nice. You're, I you're like building how you did. off of. <laughs> yeah, you're building off your own inspiration there. Um, I majored in philosophy, so I'm sorry if I'm uh, you know. If I'm sounding like uh, Mr. Philosopher over here, I can't help myself sometimes. Oh, you're in, you're in great company, I, I assure you. <laughs> but I, th- I think what Leth was talking about too is just like you know you being being having different people in your group that can do different things. I feel from someone that's outside of the development side that back in the day it was very structured and segmented. Uh, you had the people, you know, the front of the house, the back of the house. You had the developers. The developers weren't exactly talking to the customers because that's you don't have the developers talk to the front people usually. Uh, Leth, I would say, is the the exception. But um, back in the day, you had different, you know, you had your salespeople, you had your, your work people. And now it's blurring more. Leth goes on and he streams his game development. You want to ask about the game? Something about like, all right, why'd you code it like that? He's going to answer you. Whereas if you want to just talk about, hey, man, do you want to put in giant blob monsters? Okay, sure. Yeah, we can talk about that. It's, <laughs> it's, you're not just the rogue, the, the mage, the warrior of that programming company now. You can be, you can multi-class now. There's there's Paragon classes. So. Yeah, indie game development definitely. Uh, you know our budgets are smaller, and or non-existent for <laughs> for most of us, and and so you have to take on you have a team that's you know maybe three to four people at the most, and you have to take on multiple roles. Like myself, I'm kind of project lead, producer, business marketer. You know all kinds of things like not and and coder and debugger and tester <laughs> like it's it it's a lot of work um 
but uh, you know your game doesn't have to see as many sales in order for it to um, fuel your your craft for years to come. What about on I your... also think? Oh yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, Tenji. Go ahead. Um, I also think too. It doesn't. Um, I think it's harder than what people think it is, but it doesn't have to be impossible. Um, I, I think a lot of people see it's like, oh, I, I want to be an indie game dev, or I want to go into indie side, and everything's going to be easy and great and wonderful. You know, it's it's I can do what I want when I want. But uh, we also talked about earlier, it's like when you're the only boss, when no one's really pushing you except for you, it's easy to fall behind. It's easy to lose your way. It's mm -hmm. easy to um, not get stuff done. But in the same extent, you know, you're also not maybe being micromanaged by someone that doesn't have the same dream as you. So there's, I left mentioned earlier, you know, there's good and bad things in every aspect of life. Uh, I, I really think if you just do what you have a passion for and do what you're good at, um, you know, maybe you pick up a couple party members along the way to fill in those those maybe weaker <laughs> points. Um, there's no reason you can't kick some ass. I'm getting like a, a new game idea here, like about like game development RPG, where there's the, the coder and he's like a wizard, and then the marketer who's like this fighter that goes in the front lines and like attacks all the trolls or something like that. You know, like it's starting to come together now. All of a sudden. <laughs> well, um, what was what was that? Was it game? Dev Tycoon, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that I was a really fun. I, <laughs> I never, then, I never played, but it looked fun. And Pixel, uh, what was that called? Uh, Knights Desktop, uh, pen and paper, something to pen and paper. Pen and, and paper. You, you were all, yeah, you were all D and D players, but you Knights had of like, pen and paper or something. Yeah, That's yeah, there you go. You had like the pizza guy be your rogue. Oh, the game! Was oh, fun. there you go. Yeah, so someone's already got the idea, and and we've totally ignored it as <laughs> gaming community. Thank, good job, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got that's it. Why, that's why we work together. I you know what? I that, I'm really I was I've been watching this channel for a few days now. I mean, since it came up, and I'm I'm really hoping that we could find some way to continue it on past this E3 um, deadline because there really isn't. There really isn't something on. There's websites, you know, that cover indie games, but you know what? They don't cover the games you've covered, like not even close. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Really? They only go after the the indies, right? They want to look at. They want Fez on their website. They want Starbound. They want Super Meat Boy. They want like all these big names, Edmund McMillan interviews or whatever. And I contact them, and they get I get no response, and I'm like, man, I I were, I've produced like four games now. You know, that's something like none of those guys can even say. <laughs> like, you know, come on. That's, you know, Let's... that's that's a really great point. Like, with the number of games you've produced, uh, <laughs> it's astounding that you've managed to make four games. Yeah, well, it's yeah, and I've got two. You know, Wanderlust is coming, and Witchmarsh as well. I mean, that's probably why Chokefish keeps me around. Uh, they're they're the like, they just yeah. I I just my my personal thing is like just get it done. Really, that's the best advice I could offer anyone who's looking to get into indie game development is finish what you start. I mean, we've seen Double Fine fail to finish what they started, and we've seen, um, you know, Towns flounder out, and Ooh. there's big, big titles. Not These are these are great games already, mm -hmm. and worth the price of admission already, but they make promises and, and fail to deliver or, or stop development, and you know what? People well, we've are gonna also start... had that with Indie 3, and it's just a... Indie three. <laughs> these mediums. That's always yeah. You have to just uh finish the game. That's something that if it was easy to do, there'd be a lot more games out there. Finish yep. the game and then you got more work ahead of you. But um from from the development side, like me personally, um I don't really want to uh I I really value someone more when they've completed the work that they've set out to do than and this isn't to demean anybody who's starting working on a game. Please just get to it and get it done. And then the opportunity can come. And well, one of those um, things that came up, and that's kind of what we've been talking about with, especially when it comes to streaming, is that sometimes the blur, there's blurred lines between starting and finishing a project when it's early access, when there's multiple patches involved, when it's an MMO. Uh, the, the finished product is... Uh, <laughs> flexible it's it's agile and even with our project at indie 3 it's like this is every day is a new adventure and challenge and this is kind of our prototype that we're hashing out uh like mm -hmm. today 
now we have uh, now we're moving panels onto the main channel wall, so we don't have as much downtime. That's a new thing we just put together, mm-hmm. and that's why we can we can host you guys. And so like, yeah, I absolutely agree though with the sentiments of just doing it. Yep. Yeah, because if you if you uh, if you just stop midway, like it is great that you're starting so that someone's starting to make a game or start a project. And um, you know what? To a lot of people out there, don't realize how much work it is, and that's fine. Like that's just part of this business. Um, but if you don't complete it, then it, nobody's gonna want to talk to you later. It's just gonna be that's it. That's the end. Like if you if you start something, you start telling people about it, start getting people's feedback, especially if you start uh, charging for it. You better damn well finish the product. Like get it done. Absolutely. As, uh, this is kind. Of, I'm kind of touching on early access here a little bit, and I'm really. I don't want to totally derail the conversation at all, um, but really, like, the first piece of advice I tell people when they ask how you get into game development is go get Game Maker, and then the second which piece is, of advice, uh, which is free right now through free, E3, yeah. You can and go pick it up right now. The second piece of advice is is finish the games that you start. Nobody yeah. wants to talk to someone who makes like demos and prototypes you know you just get it done interesting and I, I i would say too shoot pick up game maker figure it out play around you know, make maybe a couple demos to figure out how to use it and then, yes. and then make a game it doesn't have to be super big uh we joked sometimes because even though i once again not a developer i i talk to a lot of them and hanging out with a lot of them and you know the kind of the joke is like all right my first game uh, i'm gonna make an online mmo it's gonna be oh my god killer. that's i did i was there <laughs> yep. i admit it i raised my hand i was yep. my and, name is leth yes. and i am an mmo I, developer <laughs> yes i also <laughs> have to raise my hand at that one <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that at all everybody goes through that phase the chance of you because yeah especially i remember like five years ago man mmos for me at least at that time was oh, i love me some mmos but the chance of you uh with your minimal experience at the time of getting through that is gonna be hard um i mean it's already hard enough to make maybe like a game that lasts five hours let alone one that you're gonna have to constantly work on for the rest of your life you might halfway through development decide screw this i want to make a game about uh uh wrestling penguins and i think you should make a game about that that's the vice of um creative people yep um and that's you know that's kind of why we have project managers to (laughs) to manage those creative people and they're the bad guys you know Mm because they keep you from doing what you love (laughs) and doing what you want to do but you know what you're not gonna get anything done if you just keep creating and creating and creating. You gotta, you yeah. gotta complete too. You gotta make get it, get it done as well. It's, it's hard and and it's hard for everyone. And I have great respect for people who are creative, but um, if game development isn't just a creative medium, it's it takes a ton of other. There's just so many facets to to getting a game done. Hey James, and can just we done, back? not even popular. Can just we getting back it done. To the footage. Thank you. We're at the end of uh, Tenchi is going to defeat the boss, hopefully, but it's been some Ooh. touch and go. Ooh. He's at 100 <laughs> HP. Yes. 20. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably explode. No, <laughs> don't. Or, don't. no, I'll no, probably no. Explode. Sarah and Vapid are here. They're, they're fine. Oh, no, that's right in the face. Wow. Yeah. Your health is really low there, Tenchi. Yeah. Uh, Tenchi, I wanted what happened? To, I also... I blame while this is ending, uh, I kind of want to flip because I think that's a really important part about starting and finishing your work. Uh, but there's also something to be said about like persistent work, uh, which is what happens in streaming is that you are persistently expected to uh, like show up every single day. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's also its own struggle when it comes to yeah. live streaming and when it comes to creating online content uh, like on YouTube as a, as a Let's Player. Um, and so, Tenchi, how do you continue to work, and how how can you help other dev uh, or other streamers and people who want to be in kind of a similar position as you to maintain focus? Uh, um. Well, honestly, it's uh, it's this may sound like it's going. Ah, see, look, I won. You yep. Know what? You did it. You know what? Left? You did it. <laughs> what? Your game's easy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um. Honestly, uh, it may be going against kind of what I said earlier, or it seems like it. But honestly, it's it's the it's the passion and the love for wanting to do this. Uh, there is a certain amount of discipline in anything you do in life. 
Uh, because I have I have a very fortunate position that probably 5% of streamers are in. And not because I'm anything special, but because I'm a reckless idiot. I get to do this as my job. This is my only responsibility in life right now. I get to wake up and I get to decide if I want to stream or not. Um, now, where I take that is definitely going to be, you know, whether it's successful or not, the more time I put into it, hopefully. But uh, for new streamers, honestly, do it because you want to do it. Do it because you love it. Um, and understand that it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of time commitment. Starting up the stream might be the push of the button that I said earlier, but streaming for that next three, four, five, whatever, how many hours you're going to stream up to, you know, some of my friends that stream excessive amounts, it's it's not easy. It's not it's not game development hard, sure, but um, you're you have to keep yourself motivated through different whatever it is. Uh, I like doing it because I love my community. I love my community more than my real life friends half the time. So, uh, you know, I, I go there to get my social input for the day. I go there to try and make people happy. I go there because I like playing video games. Like Leth and I said earlier, you know, we're even if we weren't developing and streaming, we'd probably be playing games and maybe would have met each other anyway, just because we're just gamers. That's what we do. But um, just... As, as with anything, just stick it out, be consistent, kick some ass, you know, find find ways to, to get yourself motivated. Um, and, and with streaming, it's all based, it's like, it's, it's that person out on the corner with the guitar playing some amazing music, but there's a good chance that no one's ever going to notice you. Or maybe two days into it, some big movie producer picks you up and you're now the soundtrack people for the new Star Wars series. It just it just put in the time, put in the effort, put on a smile on your game face and, and kick some ass. I I can attest to how challenging it is uh to to stream. I mean I stream myself and I actually participate in a Monster Hunter stream every Monday on excessive profanity. I was gonna I was gonna see if he wanted to come in here, but his name is excessive profanity. It might be a little heavy handed. <laughs> um but uh I, I just participate on there for four hours, right? And these streamers, they Tenchi and other streamers, they'll stream for like eight hours. And I'm over here after four, like, starving. <laughs> like, how do they, I don't, do they have, like, a robot sandwich machine that, like, feeds them a sandwich God, real quick during one. their three-minute ad break that they do? Like, I don't understand the, the stamina that they have to, to do these stream, the streaming. I have to talk to them about it, but it's remarkable. It's a ton of work, and I totally, um, I know they're putting in a lot of work and i you know i'm happy to support him but <laughs> yeah I'm, i don't know how i'm having eat. flashbacks to when solon and i did our 72 hour metal gear oh, solid live stream <laughs> yeah the, you we, guys you guys were beasts yeah we uh we played and slept in shifts and we all looked like zombies at the end <laughs> oh yeah, man enough of that <laughs> yeah um, that's to That's summarize, intense. I think you guys make some really good points about uh, the work involved in both streaming and game development, how they're very similar, um, where with game development, it's about starting those projects and getting them to some kind of finished spot. Um, and then Tenchi, I just loved the word that you used. I love discipline and uh, the, the professionalism in game streaming, uh, even though it seems like such a kind of uh, frivolous place, a place of play and a place of wonderment. Um, but it's all about discipline and it's about showing up every day and, uh, putting that smile on or, or how, whatever you have for yeah. your, uh, stream and trying to just make something new, make some, some kind of fun happen. Yeah. I, um, because once again, I'm in a really unique position, uh, once again, not because of anything amazing that I've done, but just because I'm kind of taking a risk on this and I have a, I have a, the, uh, position to kind of do this full time instead of, you know, I, I don't have any other job. I quit my other job to do this full time. So I have to Which discipline is very brave, myself by the way. Uh, yeah. It's, Brave and stupidity. Uh, fine <laughs> line. I depending on the day, I I kind of weave back and forth between the two. But um, there's there's nothing that I get to rely on except for you know what I've prepared this you know prepared in the past for. And you know if if I fail, I fail, and then have to kind of scramble for something else. I don't recommend this to anybody. I know people that are so much bigger than me that won't do this because this is just kind of a dumb idea. But um, 
I have to discipline myself to make this something useful. You no, know? if if I want it to be big, I have to put in the time. And um, uh, great old one mentioned earlier, and he was talking about the development process. Um, you're almost screaming into space sometimes. You and and a couple others have mentioned you are one person of so many, so many, probably hundreds of thousands of people that stream and have channels. Um, you got to put that time in. You got to discipline. You got to do it because you want to do it. Don't do it because of the money and the fame because it's not there. Uh, do it because you want to do it, and maybe one day that money and fame, I don't know, maybe it'll show up. If, <laughs> if nothing else, at least you'll have fun, and you'll have had a good time and meet good people. And you get to influence some game development, so that's kind of yeah, yeah. that's artistic, right? You can change <laughs> you know, the yeah. my way into all the games. I, I periodically, probably at least once a week, kind of just search for people playing Risk of Rain or Wanderlust or Starbound. And then just like hop, it doesn't matter how many viewers. This, there's been channels that had zero viewers, and I just hopped in there and was like, "Hey, thanks for playing Risk of Rain. Like, mm -hmm. do you want to do you want to play co-op?" And they're just like, "What? <laughs> like, why, why aren't you in Lethal Frag's channel? Like, I'm like he won't play with me, but you will. You know, like, <laughs> let's go." Yeah, it's it's great. Like like we've touched upon once again, this community is amazing. There's there there's less uh, rigidness. There's less segregation. I can jump into a channel and, you know, maybe someone knows me and I don't even know who the hell they are. And they're like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? You want to get in this game? And, you know, that's rarely going to happen, but it can. And, you know, then all of a sudden I have a new friend. Uh, this person actually knows this person. And now I know this person. It's very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, networked. Yeah. Very fluid, very fluid. networked. It's yeah, it's just it, it rolls really easily. Um, I get to meet people that I feel like holy hell, man. Like those pedestals. Like wow, this this person, this guy's really big right now, or this gal's really big. And then you talk to him and they're like, hey man, what you up to? It's like oh, you know, it's so good to meet you. Oh, thanks, man. I'm eating a donut. <laughs> You're like, uh, what? <laughs> like let's said, all these people are normal people. Um. We we all enjoy our donuts, sprinkles oh, I, or not. Jeez, man, I I love donuts. I like donuts too. I stay up too late to really take part in early morning fresh <laughs> donuts <laughs> now. Like, <laughs> when they open. oh my god! Whenever I, I have to that. get up early for Monster Hunter, I'm like, oh, it's donut time. It's donut time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just go up and talk to people. Um, at PAX, uh, when I first got there, you know, I was just walking around, derping around. And uh, someone tweeted me and it's like, hey, I just saw you, but I was too afraid to come up and say hi to you. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, come, come say hi to me. And it's it's amazing that um, I talked to some of the big, big streamers there and some big developers. And, you know, they're like, hey, what's up, man? Thanks for your support. And, you know, and I went and ate with some really big people and they were completely cool. So I think especially at the conventions, it's easier because you're in person. But um, yeah, it is. You know, put on the confident shoes and, and just go up and say hi. The very worst, they say, "Oh, hey, you know, cool, what's up? I'm gonna go do something." You know, <laughs> they're busy. They're probably yeah. not gonna be a total jerk. They're probably not. like the like, they may like be busy. the likelihood of them doing that is low unless they are a total jerk, and then yeah. everyone will have the same story to tell. You know, like, right? It's nothing personal at that point, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, know that a lot of people there, especially the bigger ones, maybe are doing something. When I was leaving PAX. Uh, there's a really big YouTuber called Gassy Mexican, who's uh, he's a really good vo uh, uh, voice artist. Vo what what are they calling those now? Voice over artists. Yeah, there you go, voice actor. And uh, you know, I saw him there, and he was setting something up. I just said, "Hey, man, I know you're busy. I just wanted to say hi and congratulations. I really love the stuff you do. Thank you for being you." And you know, he's like, "Oh, thank you, blah blah." And you know, and I and I left him alone because he was busy. But uh, he was a really nice guy, and he took that you know little bit out of his time to when he was setting stuff up to you know turn and greet me and say thank you. So, you know, they, they may be busy, but um, they're just normal people, just like all of us. Yeah, anyone at PAX who sees our booth with Wanderlust Adventures, like, please come around and just say, I, I got a chance to listen to you on Indie 3 and just want to say hi or let's, I want to play our freaking game. You know, let's go. Let's, let's Better give out meatballs. Or... Meatballs? Yep. Oh. Big uh, meatball spells, dude. Just like the first game. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. I was like, wait, what if they bring meatballs with me? Hell yeah, man. man. It, that, you and the meatballs, dude. Dude, the meatball There's... spell is the best spell. <laughs> you throw freaking meatballs out of it, and it kills everybody. It's a, oh, it's a awesome. boulder. No. It's a boulder. <laughs> boulder It's not meatball. a meatball. It's well, not sauce can... being left on the ground. It's like a trail of rubble. 
<laughs> See, you could, well, you could throw those at people. <laughs> I'm about to do a Tenchi mod now. Yeah, and I'll just shout, lightning bolt! <laughs> oh my god. That is streaming's impact on games. There you go. Yep. Just meatballs and... <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> I was. I don't even remember what I was saying. No, I'm not to get a meatball sandwich. Um. So, uh, <laughs> I guess a last question. And this is kind of out of left field. Um. But <laughs> you guys, field. you guys are very, very hard workers, and a lot of this panel has been about all the hard work that goes into it. Um. So, what do you guys do in in your off time, and how do you guys relax and and get get red get yourself ready to go back into it again? Uh, Tench, you want to field that one real quick? Because yeah. I'm, I'm actually gonna have to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, shoot! After this, I'm gonna go get meatballs and donuts. Oh, jeez! I'm freaking starving. <laughs> um, I don't know. W with streaming, it's nice because um, you get to. I, I, I really don't have deadlines. The, the one deadline I is is I, I is I have is um making rent and paying my bills. So whatever, <laughs> however much work I need to put in for that is I've, I've set up a structured schedule and a, of, I want to do it at this time on these days. And I think everybody should do that. It's consistency. Like that's really, really good for streaming. Um, it, it lets people set aside time for you and then also know when you're going to be on. Um, it makes it a big deal. Then you can become part of their, their routine as well. But um, when I'm offline of streaming, I'm usually, uh, what I recommend, especially for streamers, uh, I'm in other people's streams. I'm networking. I'm lurking. Lurking is, uh, you know, just having their window up, but maybe not actively chatting. Um, but being a part of the community, um, I, when I'm not doing that, you know, I, I'm trying to get back into the gym because I think that'll hopefully raise my energy levels so I don't have to rest as much. Um, but, you know, take care of yourself, relax, whatever it is, uh, watch some anime or, you know, relax, go swimming, whatever it is. But I, I just, I just kind of derp about, uh, nothing has changed in my life in the last 20 years, except that I'm just doing this now, quote unquote, professionally. <laughs> yeah. Um, with me, I, I, oh, man, I haven't even really played that many games recently. I would love to just say, yeah, I just play games when I'm not working on them, <laughs> but that's that's not really the case. The the last game I played to completion was Dark Souls two, nice. and that was a while ago. I mean, I got it at a console launch it was like mid March or something. Um, but uh, no, I, I'm I'm actually kind of a I'm a pretty introverted guy. It probably doesn't seem like it, um, me coming on the show, but but I mm. basically have to get kind of going to a man cave and like recharge, play some guitar. Um, compose some music like that's another passion of mine that I don't really get to share with people um, but that's fine it's my own thing and I get to kind of um, just you know shut out the outside world for a minute before I jump back in um, kind of like drying off after you jump in a pool jump out mm -hmm. of a pool or whatever I guess uh, go back to normal routines um, and uh Basically, yeah, going into other Twitch streams and interacting with them and trying to, you know, keep that going as I just do whatever else I'm doing. That's um, super cool. No, there's there's yeah. a lot of really different variety of things going on there, and that's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, you try to make time for your passions. If you have multiple passions, you know, it's going to be tough. But so uh, We are way over time, and I'm yeah. so, so happy that I got to have you guys on over... Uh, for Indie E3 and representing streamers and game developers and that relationship uh, between the two. Uh, oh, it's great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's really good times. It's it's unfortunate that, you know, we don't have 12 hours to talk about this because I think Leth and I and, and both yourself, uh, Solon, we could probably talk about this all day. It's such a big community and it's such a big industry. But, I mean, I, I think you can glean pretty much the general idea, if nothing else, yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't from what we've a, been saying. We didn't even get to talk about, like, how viewers become streamers and then streamers uh, become game devs and then game yeah, devs Maybe if we viewers. were robots and uh, didn't have to ever eat, like, all the other streamers, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> Meatballs but... and donuts. <laughs> All right, Solon, you want to take uh, it away? Yes, yes. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys have your links in chat and uh, oh, thank you so where, much. where people can find you. So you are, we have H.J. Tenchi. You can find him at twitch.tv backslash H.J. Tenchi pretty much every day for about... I think it's forward slash, actually. Sorry, I always Not do that. Not to correct. <laughs> I, I do that every time. 
<laughs> oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible with my my bad slash. Your slashes. <laughs> my slash. Slash of my some slash kind. is weak. Uh, so forward slash uh, H J Tenchi, and uh, Lath. You can find all of the different work that Lath does uh, on Wanderlust Adventure, uh, Witch Marsh, which is almost finished with its Kickstarter. So if you haven't grabbed yeah. it yet. Now is the time that you want to grab it so you can get first access to it when it comes out. And Risk of Rain. Yeah, if you're at all interested in what I do, please, uh, if you have Twitter, follow. I got my Twitter thing up here. I was smart. See, look at that. Right there. Got my Griffin Matta up there. Give me a follow. And I, I stream like almost every other day, and we can continue these conversations on my own channel. I'd be happy to talk to you guys and mm-hmm. see you there. And uh, HJ Tenchi as well. Yep, right you there. can find me uh, right there, HJ, at HJ Tenchi, you know, on Twitter and twitch.tv slash HJ Tenchi. You know, it's, it's all the same thing. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys so much for coming, and uh, we're going to take the stream down for about five, ten minutes, maybe longer. Actually, no, uh, we have our next panel is at five o'clock, so in half an hour here, I think we're going to take a short break and do things like eat that we've been neglecting so far today. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there, there it is, meatballs there and donuts meatballs again. Meatballs and yes, <laughs> yes. This uh, panel made me hungry. So, <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So, thank you everybody for coming in. We are going to run some music for 30 minutes while we get ready for our next panel, which is going to be, let me double check here, that is going to be Critical Approaches. So, that should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> <All> <laughs> right. Balls and donuts. <laughs>